it gets more interesting. This is Kevin McFadden, former Air Force Special Operations Research and Rescue. He came back over with his hand over the radio, and it sounded like a countdown. And at the last few seconds, he took his hand off, and you heard three, two, one, and he was just saying, just run for your life, just run for your life. And then it was like another two, three seconds, you heard explosions. Like, boom! And it's like a distinct sound. It's not like when the compression, like boom, 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 boom. Like floors that were dropping and collapsing. This was boom! And like you felt a rumble on the ground, like almost like you wanted to grab onto something. That, to me, I knew that was an explosion. There was no doubt in my mind. Very interesting. <clears throat> Now, do we have enormous pyroclastic clouds of pulverized concrete? Watch this as the clouds, which are actually far greater than normal, uh, even as you saw in the previous video, normal uh, controlled demolitions. And uh, when we bring Dr. Jones up, you'll, you'll get a, some understanding as to where this incredible heat comes from, which expands this, these clouds uh, 35 miles an hour as they race down the street. Do we have pools of molten iron? Well, the structural engineer of the World Trade Center himself, Leslie Robertson, as of 21 days after the attack, the fires were still burning and molten steel was still running. O'Toole, Bronx firefighter, seeing a crane lifting a steel beam vertically from deep within the catacombs of Ground Zero, dripping with molten steel. This last fire was not put out until three months after 9-11, driven by this incredible heat talked about here. Mark Loiseau, the president of Controlled Demolition Incorporated, told the American Free Press that in the basements of the World Trade Center, where 47 central support columns connected to the bedrock, hot spots of literally molten steel were discovered more than a month after September 11th. These incredibly hot areas were found at the bottoms of the elevator shafts, down seven basement levels. The molten steel was found three, four, and five weeks later when the rubble was being removed. He said that molten steel was also found at World Trade Center 7. The highest temperature was in the east corner of the South Tower, where a temperature of 1,377 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded. The molten steel in the basement was more than double that temperature. These are surface temperatures. 13, 1400 degrees. A and B represents building seven. The other hot spots right under the Twin Towers. And they are, the source of this uh, material is, remember there's no surface fires. The, the source of the heat is well under. Here's a, a backhoe picking up the molten metal, which is dripping off the backhoe. Now, what are we talking about here? The structural steel doesn't even begin to melt until 2700 degrees. The office fires are only 900, maybe 1,200 degrees, and that's with good fuel-air mixture. We're missing 1,000 degrees of heat required to produce this molten metal. That's why it's extremely important. We're going to be looking at a likely culprit uh, when we bring up Dr. Jones. Let's take a look first at some photographs here of molten metal fires burned and molten metal flowed in a pile of ruins still settling beneath my feet. And this is uh, Bart Borsanger hired to bring relics up from the rubble to save them. One of the more unusual artifacts to emerge from the rubble is this rock-like object that has come to be known as the meteorite. This is fused element of, of steel, molten steel and concrete and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. And almost like a chunk of lava from Kilauea or Iceland where they're very sharp but, but breakable shards on the end here. And it goes on and on. Here's Dr. Uh, John Gross, uh, lead engineer of NIST, uh, reporting, uh, uh, well, answering a question about this molten metal. Listen very carefully to his response. Um, I'm curious about uh, the uh, pool of molten steel that was found in the bottom of the, of the tower. Uh, I, I, and, I, 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 I
Have you seen it? Well, I have not personally, but the witnesses there found huge bolts of molten steel beneath the towers. And uh, scientists, some scientists don't think that the uh, collapse of the building could have melt, melted all that steel. And uh, uh, professor, physics professor analyzed some of the steel. And uh, Stephen Jones, he found evidence of, uh, of thermate residue, mm -hmm. which would explain how the buildings collapsed by means of frequent explosions. So, have you analyzed the, uh, the steel for a um, First of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was a uh, full of melt, melt steel. Um, I know of absolutely no way, there's no eyewitness who says so that would have produced it. Uh, you get down below and see molten steel. Molten steel running down the channel. Like you're in a foundry. Delta Boots is one of the biggest things. Out still the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, at 1100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center, this gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1500 degrees. We got some small windows into, um, what we thought was the board some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know, it was just boring inside. This is a bright, bright reddish orange color. Um, I know of absolutely no way, if there's no eyewitness who said so, they would I don't think you're convinced. Uh, what did the first responders and, de and demolition contractors say? Uh, Peter Tully saw literally molten steel at the World Trade Center. Abu Hassan Astani, structural engineer, saw melting of girders in the World Trade Center. Chaplain Herb Trim, I talked to many contractors said they actually saw molten metal beams had just totally been melted because of the heat. Steel flowed in molten streams. Some pockets now being uncovered, they're finding molten steel. Seeing the molten steel, layers upon layers, red hot metal beams excavated from deep beneath. Molten metal, which was still red hot weeks after the events. Molten steel at the heart of the tower's remains. Guy Lonsberry, New York National Guard. Molten steel beams, major role in debris removal. <clears throat> the streams of molten metal that leaked from the hot cores and flowed down broken walls inside the foundation hole. Molten metal dripping from a beam. Beam would be dripping molten steel. Still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of the walls. Debris past the columns was red hot, molten, running. Looked like a vat of molten steel. Far beyond a normal fire that is nearly impossible to draw conclusions about it based on other fires, he says, after saying pieces of steel still cherry red. What produced all that molten metal?